Welcome to the last episode of the Convection Connection. We conclude our series with a very hot topic, the Sun. The Sun is a massive ball of charged particles, electrons and protons. A gas of charged particles is called a plasma. Now a glowing plasma can be found inside a lit fluorescent light bulb. Just for fun, we've got a machine called a Tesla coil here which can generate a huge electric field and actually cause lightning. I'm going to turn the Tesla coil on and the electric field from the coil is going to light the plasma in the fluorescent bulb. So let's watch while I turn this on. Oh, I almost forgot. I need the appropriate headgear for this to work. Okay, now I'm ready. Here we go. Well, the sun is made of gas and gas plasma, just like in this plasma tube right here. Now, I have plasma in my blood. Is that the same thing? No, it's completely different. This kind of plasma is a special gas with a strong electric charge in it. Now, the center of the sun is much hotter than the outside, so we have convection going on in the sun just like in all the other hot and cold fluids that we've looked at. If you looked at the surface of the sun, it would look as if it were boiling. The hot fluid heats up, rises to the surface, sinks, and drops back down again. Each one of these spots on the surface of the sun is called a granule, and each one of them is about 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers across, so about the distance from one side of Colorado to the other. So there's convection on the surface of the sun. Yeah, and maybe you've heard of something called sunspots. You're a weatherman. Yes, uh, big storms on the sun. Now, if you want to look for spots on the sun, never look directly at the sun. Don't use sunglasses, don't use a telescope. You need special tools to look at the sun and make sure you've got someone supervising you who knows what they're doing. Now, we've covered an awful lot of information in this series, but Larry Green is going to help us remember as he reviews the nine episodes of The Convection Connection. First, there was density. Density is mass divided by volume. The more mass in a space, the more dense an object. A rock this size weighs two and a half pounds, but a rock that size weighs about 600 pounds. Then we learned about so temperature and how it can affect the density sure of fluid. And you can see the heat waves just coming up off the top of the right. pyramid. Next, we saw the power of air pressure. Air exerts pressure on whatever it touches. On day five, we talked about buoyancy the ability to float. The reason something yeah, sinks exactly or floats depends on how pounds. dense it is compared to its surroundings. On, on day six, cool. we took a ride in a hot air balloon to demonstrate convection. Now, even though the air inside and outside the balloon was the same, the balloon lifted off the ground because the hot air inside the balloon was less dense than the air outside the balloon. Next, we learned about convection in the atmosphere. Air is a fluid. Clouds are visible proof of convection. Hot, moist air rises. Eventually, it cools down and condenses into water droplets that fall back to Earth as rain or snow. On day eight, we saw how convection drives the circulation of water in the oceans. Areas of warm water and areas of cool water in the oceans show that convection is taking place. Cold, salty water at the poles sink. Warm, fresher water takes its place. And then yesterday, and today, we learned how convection actually takes place inside the Earth and the Sun. Remember the silly putty? Silly putty is like the Earth's mantle or crust. It can stretch if pulled slowly, or snap if it's pulled apart quickly. Convection inside the Sun happens because the Sun is made up of a fluid called gas plasma. For Larry Green and my colleague, Dr. Alex Weaver, I'm Michael Dubson. Thanks for watching The Convection Connection. Goodbye.